So it's really no secret by now that we're kind of an advocate for AOC monitors. The models we've seen over the past couple of years have been nothing but short of amazing, and the usual abilities to combine decent gaming specs in resolution and refresh rates with very competitive prices. And it's pretty much the same with the AOC C27G2ZU that we're taking a look at today. It's a 27 inch gaming monitor with a 1080p resolution and a whopping 240Hz refresh rate that costs just over £300, making it one of the cheapest 240Hz monitors on the market. But as you all know it's 2020 and there's going to be some questions surrounding its resolution for sure. A 27 inch monitor at 1080p on paper does seem a little lacklustre as people are generally striving now for to hit those 1440p resolutions. And of course, with Nvidia releasing their new 30 series range of graphics cards, it does, to be honest with you, feel like AOC are being left in the past. But to be perfectly honest with you, it's not really much of a problem. Sure, when you're gaming and things are zipping around the screen and it's fast paced, you're not going to notice the lower DPI of a 1080p resolution. But when you're doing desktop work, like looking at a website, photo editing or office based tasks, then sure, it does look a little dated now. What more though, the AMD panel is compatible with AMD FreeSync and they've even announced that the adaptive sync is compatible with Nvidia cards as well. And it also has a frequency range of 48 Hertz to 240 Hertz. The AOC 27 G2 ZU gaming monitor is curved, which is supposed to keep the edges of your screen in your peripheral vision to heighten immersion. And for the most part, it does work well and suits the gaming aesthetic. And as it is only a 1500R curve, it's very slight anyway. What is more impressive though is the VA panel that's sitting in front of you. Okay, it's not as vivid or as contrasty as an IPS display, but it can definitely still hold its own by offering decent black levels, a claimed 1000 to 1 contrast ratio, although measuring the contrast with our data color spider, it's closer to 1120 to 1 at 100% brightness. Now speaking of color during our testing, we found that the AOC monitor hit 100% of the sRGB color gamut which is definitely advantageous for gamers and casual users as this is what you're going to be generally using for your time with the monitor. However for any designers out there or people who are needing a monitor for color work it's really not the best option. It measured at 85% of the Adobe RGB color space, 82% of the NTSC color space, and 91% of the DCI-P3 color space. Sure, all of these are decent scores. I really don't want to take that away from AOC, but it's still not as accurate as some professional grade monitors. The same with its Delta E score, with an average of 0.92 in our testing, colors can be said to be pretty accurate with an unfortunate downfall in the blue teal colors, which is where the average score loses out. Now display uniformity is also pretty decent too, which is usually a big downfall in monitors on the cheaper end of the scale, but lose out in the corners where you can see there is a little bit of backlight bleed, which means you could start seeing washed out colors. Its biggest downfall though is the fact that ghosting can be an issue with a VA panel and during the UFO test, it can be pretty noticeable. Inside of games though, where there's action on the screen, again, it's not really noticeable. Its claimed response rate is sitting at 0.5 milliseconds MPRT, which is all right, but it's not really anything to shout home about. And lastly, the monitor hits a 300 nit brightness, which for this non on HDR monitor is perfectly fine. After all, this is a bare bones gaming monitor right here and there's no real fancy frills, except maybe the black stabilizer inside of the menu, which is there to brighten shadowy areas inside of games. But all of this is wrapped up into what I can only describe as a gamer targeted design. The monitor is black made from plastic, but there are flashes of red dotted around the product and most notably on the stand and around the legs. But there is the staple red streak across the bottom of the front frame as well which you can see here. While we're here I want to point out the bezels as well they're pretty skinny and the rear of the monitor has a couple of red streaks on there but you're never going to see them when the monitor is on your desk. The stand itself is just clipped into place onto the back of the monitor which I love as it's so easy to set up and it also swivels up to 30 degrees. It can have a generous tilt and can be raised up and down on its stand as well 
which gives gamers a chance to get their monitors into a position. Although chances are you're going to be sitting head on to it anyway due to the 1500R curve. AOC have yet again decided to go for a several button setup to traverse their slightly complex menu systems and unfortunately have ignored several pleas from me and TechnoOvo to change to a more innovative joystick setup. But to be honest with you, once you're used to it, it's not really a problem and it's not that complex anyway. There's also a decent amount of ports on the back as well. You can find a DisplayPort 1.4 as well as two HDMI 2.0s. There is a port for your headphones to bypass the built-in two watt speakers, which are quite frankly pretty naff anyway. And there's also a small four port USB hub with USB 3.2 Gen 1 speeds. All cables are included to get you going as well, so there's not any need to go out and buy extra cables, unless of course you need them longer than 1.8 meters. With gaming though, results of that 240Hz refresh rate are immediately noticeable, with more focused esports titles like CSGO and Valorant looking even more fluid compared to monitors that can hit 144Hz refresh rates. Even the mouse on the desktop moves with a lot less trail than you can expect from lower refresh rate monitors. One thing I will point out is that there is a built-in overdrive setting which aims to improve the ghosting as much as possible. We found medium to be the best balance anything higher seem to lead to obvious issues. As I said before, it's very noticeable in the UFO ghosting test, which is a shame, but this does come down to the fact that it's a VA panel. It's a trade-off for better colors over the duller looking TM panels. However, being the casual gamer that I am, ghosting isn't really a huge issue for me with this monitor. The AOC C27 G2ZU is a fantastic monitor, and again, I'd like to say that AOC have actually smashed it out of the park. If it wasn't for its obvious ghosting issues, it might be one one of the best monitors out there for those on a budget who also want to hit those blistering refresh rates. Now you've got to ask yourself though, is a little ghosting going to be a massive issue for you? Now for me, it's not really. I'm not hugely sensitive to the fact. The other downfall with this monitor is the fact that it's only 1080p. Now for gaming, this isn't much of an issue, but for desktop work, it's always nicer to have a sharper image with a larger pixel density. But I can't take anything away from AOC. They've done a fantastic job with this monitor. Plus, if you want the same monitor without the USB ports and speakers, then you could go for the C27G2ZE instead, which costs around £270 online. So thank you very much for checking out our video review of the AOC C27 G2ZU monitor. If you enjoyed this video, then do hit that like button. Please subscribe to keep up with our latest tech and gaming videos. And also let us know in the comments down below whether you would go for an AOC monitor like this, whether you would sacrifice that extra resolution up at 1440p for that higher refresh rate, because you know, you usually get 1440p 144Hz monitors or this 1080p at 240 hertz let us know in the comments down below what you would do also check out this link just below it leads to our twitch account twitch.tv forward slash technuovo where we stream on a tuesday wednesday thursday and we do bonus streams on the other days of the week if you've got anything you want to ask us tech wise if you want to see us play some games or you just want to join in with the conversation please do head over to twitch.tv forward slash technuovo on those days and just come say hi as i say follow this link here click it now well, you can't click it, it's embedded in the video. There is the link down in the description. As I say, thanks very much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one.